सुक्रोज माल्टोज एंड लैक्टोज सुक्रोज द मोनोमर ऑफ सुक्रोज इज अल्फा डी प्लस ग्लूकोज एंड बीटा डी माइनस फ्रोक्टोज समटाइम क्वेश्चन इज आस्क वट इज द प्रोडक्ट ऑप्टेन ऑन हाइड्रोलिस ऑफ सुक्रोज द आंसर विल बी अल्फा डी ग्लूकोज दैट इज डी प्लस ग्लूकोज एंड बीटा डी माइनस फ्रोक्टोज देन लिंकेज हाउ दे आर लिंक टूगेदर देर इज लिंकेज बिटवीन सी वन C1 carbon of glucose and C2 carbon of fructose. This linkage is known as glycosidic linkage. So simply link is C1 C2 glycosidic. It is a non-reducing sugar because there is no free carbonyl group. Second one, I uh, sorry, sucrose is known as inward sugar. The question can be asked why sucrose is known as inward sugar. Sucrose is dextrorotatory in nature. but on hydrolysis when it is hydrolyzed it gives glucose which is dextrorotatory having a specific rotation 52.5 and fructose having rotation minus 92.4 it is a levorotatory and overall it becomes levorotatory in nature because minus 92.4 is greater than plus 52.5 in the sense of rotation that's why on hydrolysis it gives levorotatory dextrorotatory converted into the levorotatory hence it is known as inward sugar the third second one is maltose maltose the monomer of maltose is alpha d plus glucose the link is c1c4 it is a reducing sugar because there is free carbonyl group the third example is lactose the monomer of lactose is alpha beta d galactose and beta d plus glucose the link is is c1 c4 c1 of galactose and c4 of glucose it is known as beta glycosidic linkage it is also a reducing sugar sugar due to the presence of free carbonyl group now we have to study about the polysaccharides the polysaccharides there are two polysaccharides in our uh, syllabus in this chapter the first one is the starch and second one is cellulose first know in detail about the cellulose starch starch it is a polymer of d glucose d plus glucose that is the d plus glucose on hydrolysis star gives d plus glucose the starch has two component one is known as amylose and another one amylopectin this amylose part of the starch forms 15 to 20% of the starch and it forms 80 to 85 percent. The amylose is water soluble, and it is water insoluble. What is the monomer of the amylose? Both have the same monomer, D glucose, but it is unbranched, and the amylose is branched. the linkage is c1 c4 here the linkage in in chain c1 c4 but in the branching c1 c6 c6 in branch and c1 c4 in chain this question is asked about the differences between the amylose and pectin so these points can be discussed amylose it is a 20, 15 to 20 percent part of the starch and amylopectin 80 to 85 percent this part is water soluble this part is water insoluble unbranched branched link is c1c4 and c1c4 in chain but c1c6 in branching the next polysaccharide is cellulose the monomer of cellulose is beta d glucose beta d glucose and the linkage is c1 c4 it is also a state chain there is no branching 
and the linkage is known as beta glycosidic linkage. Another one is glycosin, it is also known as animal starch. The excess of glucose in our body, in human being, is stored in the liver in the form of glycosin when required in the, for the generation of uh, production of energy, glycosin is converted to glucose. The glycosin is just like structurally, it is similar to the starch, but there is, it is highly branched. Now the carbohydrate portion is over. I am going to discuss about the proteins. Before discussion about the protein, first we have to know the amino acid. What are amino acids? Amino acid, the compound having amino group and carboxylic group. General formula, general structural formula of amino acid can be written as is the structure of alpha amino acids. At alpha position, there is amino group. It has two functional group, amino and carboxylic group. These amino acids are classified on the basis of first, they are essential and non-essential in terms of essential and non-essential. The amino acids, the essential amino acids which are required for us in the form of diet because these amino acids are also synthesized in our body. So if the body does not synthesize amino acid, that are required from the diet. The essential amino acids are not synthesized in our body and non-essential amino acids, these we get from our diet. Total, there are 20 amino acids. We do not require to learn all these amino acids. Few examples of amino acid of essential and non-essential. The essential amino acids are valine, leucine, isoleucine, arsenine, lysine, etc. and non-essential amino acid, glycine, alanine. Another classification of amino acid is acidic, basic and neutral. Acidic, basic and neutral amino acid. These are on the basis of presence of amino and carboxylic group. If the amino group and car carboxylic group in, in amino acids are equal, then the amino acid is neutral. If the number of amino group is more than carboxylic group, it becomes basic. Similarly, if the number of carboxylic group is more than amino group, it becomes acidic. The neutral amino acids are glycine, alanine, valine, leucine. The amino, sorry, uh, the basic amino acids are arsenine, lysine and the acidic amino acids are glutamic acid and aspartic acid. One more question is asked, the Jupiter ion, what is Jupiter ion? When the amino acid is dissolved in water, it exists in the amphoteric form, dipolar, which is dipolar, that is amino acid NH2, it can exist as, it accept amino group, accept proton from this carboxylic group and become as NH3 plus. This dipolar form of amino acid is known as Zwitter ion. It is amphoteric in nature. It may be has as acidic as well as basic. And the next portion is proteins. Proteins chemically it is a polyamide. It is a polymer of amino acids. Here is the two example, simple example of uh, dipeptide. There are two amino acids joined together. The amino acids joined together from two different groups, that is functional group, uh, carboxylic group and amino group. And the bond between these two amino acids is formed as, known as peptide bond. Linkage between two amino acids in polypeptide is known as peptide bond. That is C-O and H. This linkage is known as peptide bond. 
on the basis of the number of the amino acid these are classified as dipeptide tripeptide polypeptide hexapeptide etc and finally we get the polypeptide the polypeptides having more are more than 100 amino, uh, amino acids simply that these are known as the protein but there are certain proteins having less than 100 like insulin that has contains 51 amino acids now the structure of the protein type of protein before the structure type of protein there are two type of the protein fibrous protein and globular proteins this question is also asked differences difference between the fibrous protein and globular protein in the fibrous protein the polypeptide chain runs parallel and these are held together by the hydrogen bonding this is the fiber like structure and is water insoluble example hair hair that is a protein name of the protein is keratin and also it is found in the silk wool natural hair silk these are the type of fibrous protein another one is the globular protein in the globular protein this the structure is spherical due to the folding of the polypeptide chains and this is water soluble the example of globular protein is insulin and egg albumin so it is sufficient to write these points for the difference between fibrous and globular protein now the structure of protein sometimes this question is also asked what are the structure of proteins mainly we have to study about the three uh, degree of the proteins primary secondary and tertiary structure of primary protein secondary protein and tertiary protein the structure of primary protein is it is related to the sequence of amino acid in polypeptide chain how the amino acids are linked together that is referred to the primary structure of protein as we know protein is a polypeptide of amino acids there are number of the amino acids joined together then what will be the sequence of particular amino acids that is the structure of primary protein then secondary structure related to the shape there are two type of the secondary structure alpha helical structure that is alpha helix and beta pleated sheet structure the difference between these two structures are in alpha helix it is a helical structure just like this one twisting of the polypeptide chain into the right handed screw this one and there is linkage between the one helix to another by co group of one helix and nh group of another by the hydrogen bonds in this way it becomes stable and form this structure this is the primary structure this one is the secondary structure in secondary structure this helical structure represent the alpha helix and in beta plated six the helix get stress maximum to a maximum this polypeptide chains are stressed out to a maximum giving a stable structure and it is a it is known as beta pleated seed structure these are held together to give their stability by the hydrogen bonds, hydrogen sulfides, wonder wall interaction, wonder wall force and electrostatic force of interaction. These forces are also present in the tertiary structure. Tertiary structure is, there is further folding in secondary structure. This one, this gives the tertiary structure. Further folding in secondary structure, this gives the globular protein and here the molecules are held together to give their stability by hydrogen bond, hydrogen sulfides, wonder wall force and the electrostatic force of attraction. Okay, the last nucleic acid, nucleic acid found in the cell, the, we have to study about the DNA and RNA. DNA, difference between DNA and RNA, DNA, first there are sugar, pentose sugar, this is known as deoxyribose and RNA, ribose sugar, base, there are two base, purine and pyrimidine, in purine, adenine and guanine, pyrimidine, cytosine and thymine, but in RNA, adenine, guanine, cytosine, in place of thymine, it is uracil. DNA is double helical structure and RNA is single strand structure. DNA is found in the nucleus and in some cell organs like mitochondria and RNA is found in the nucleus as well as in the cytoplasm. The function of DNA is it is responsible for the heredity to transmit the character from parents to their offsprings and RNA is responsible for protein synthesis. The protein synthesis takes place in the ribosome. The next part of this chapter that is last one is the vitamins. 
we are studying from the primary standard what are the vitamins what are the type of vitamins and their diseases caused by the deficiency of, deficiency of vitamins first we have the properties related to the vitamins that is classification first we have to know the classification of vitamins vitamins are classified as on the basis of the solubility in two group first one is water soluble vitamin and second fat soluble vitamin water soluble vitamin it has vitamin b and c b means b complex there are number of vitamins b1 b2 b3 b5 b12 and vitamin c and rest vitamins are fat soluble vitamin a d k e etc then we have to know the deficiency diseases caused by the deficiency of certain vitamins think you can study about the diseases caused by the deficiency of vitamins yourself i think you will be able to answer the question of ask should to, could be asked from the this chapter that's all about biomolecules thank you